hi, you've reached Moon Express, and this is Bob Richards. You probably went to time then. We're really busy trying to get to the moon, so please leave a message, and somebody will get back to you as soon as we can. Bye now. Space is going to be the next big industry. I suppose your company is getting me closer to the day when I might find myself on the moon. Moon is nothing but another continent from our perspective. And just like any other continent, we want to use that continent and the resources from there to make life better for all of us here. Bob Richards, CEO of a California startup called Moon Express, believes that the first trillionaires will come from space. I see the moon and the moon sees me. And soon I can see from the moon. We can now travel to other planets and bring resources back from there. Leading the world to space helped America achieve new heights of prosperity here on Earth. Using the ingenuity and cost effectiveness of private enterprise, we're going back. team have been designing unique landing gear and cutting-edge miniature radar systems. There's nothing new about getting to the moon. It's about doing it, applying innovation and disruptive technologies so small teams can do what only superpowers could do before. We will be sending robotic landers initially to the surface of the moon, carrying scientific and commercial payloads. Then we'll get into the era of exploring for resources and learning how to process those resources and bringing them back to Earth. The moon, unlike Earth, has not been molten for four billion years. Okay, <laughs> So the things that hit have stayed on the surface and doesn't wow. have that atmosphere to burn things up. I think there's more platinum on the moon than there is in all the mining reserves of planet Earth. The platinum, the rare Earth elements, plus you have helium-3 that essentially you can use for fusion energy in a small amount of helium-3 could provide energy for the whole planet for hundreds of years. So it is not just a fun project, it is also a great business. I just see it uh, as a beginning, an instant in history. Hey guys, how's it going? I know that intro was painful, but if you think that was bad, wait until you see the CNN money interview at the end of this video. It's cringeworthy. So Moon Express is, in my opinion, a complete joke. It's just another fraud of a corporation partnering with NASA and the illegitimate US government. This year, the so-called media informed us that Moon Express was given the first approval for a private company to leave Earth's orbit and go to the moon. It's also funny that we have to get approval from the government masters to leave the planet? What, are we trapped on here? I mean, they own space too? So after reading the stories, I started with the FAA, and this fact sheet is some of the only useful information I could find. When I called the FAA contact listed there, a Miss Laura Brown, who by the way was very nice and is apparently just a media contact person, she basically didn't have any additional information and didn't know where to find it. The only thing she could give me was the number that I called at the start of this video when I got Bob Richards' answering machine message. It's probably just a ghost line. I left a message and got no response. I called back several times, obviously no answer. And you know, these productions and hoaxes, they usually turn out to be endless rabbit holes. I just like to shine a light down the rabbit hole using logic and reason and then move on. Ain't nobody got time to get lost in these fairy tales. Ain't nobody got time for that. The monumental task of going to the moon was magically accomplished over 45 years ago with paper and pencils and calculators and really smart NASA engineers. It hasn't been replicated since that time due to the lame excuses of cost or there's nothing there but dirt and rocks, yet 
Now, all of a sudden, we are going to start mining operations on the moon, and Moon Express is sending a magical lander there and soon hopes to send people and start harvesting resources. All done by a few billionaires and a couple of computer guys. Just like that, based solely on a few tests of their orbiter on Earth, ignoring the fact that these tests were conducted with the Earth's atmosphere for thrust and the Earth's gravity, which bear no resemblance to the moon where there is supposedly no atmosphere and completely different gravity. The formerly impossible task is now no problem for Moon Express and its non-existent workforce. Just like NASA's failure of not testing spacesuits and astronaut performance in vacuum chambers, Moon Express apparently is happy with testing a lander in Earth's atmosphere, even though it will be landing on the moon with zero atmosphere. I mean, really? What is with people? It would be like a football player training for a football game, but doing so on a baseball diamond with baseball gloves and bats while chewing tobacco. It's ridiculous. I mean, come on, kids. And good luck trying to find any information on this company. All they have is a crappy website and no staffed offices. Check out the site. It's a complete fail. A cheap piece of junk with only three links that a child could put together. The homepage consists of their logo, which is a 33, of course, with the phrase, We Return. The only content is a bare-bones PDF brochure, apparently written for a 6th grade reading level, describing the company and its magical dreams. The photos on the Moon Express site are very cheesy and contrived. They look like crisis actors. And what's with Bob Richards using the same old photo on his personal site? He looks like he's trolling for women or men on Facebook or a dating site, not like the co-founder and CEO of a corporation. Doesn't this super successful guy have any real photos that are not part of a movie set? And when you do a Google image search for Bob Richards or Robert Richards, all you find besides Robert Richards the child molester and heir to the DuPont fortune are contrived photo ops or Bob Richards at speaking engagements or other entertainment productions. I mean, check out Babyface's bio from his own website. Dr. Robert Richards is a space entrepreneur and futurist. He is a co-founder of the International Space University, Singularity University, the Space Generation Foundation, and Moon Express, a lunar resources company. How can they call it that? They haven't done anything yet. It's all for show. Anyways, competing in the $30 million Google Lunar X Prize, where he currently serves as president and CEO. So let's listen to this Bob Richards and see what he's all about. You know, I think we're really on the verge of reaching all the dreams that we've been working on for so hard in our collective space mafia, in our collective space mafia, space mafia, space mafia, throughout the world. You know, no matter where we're working, whether it's in government or academia, or the commercial space. This is a very exciting time. And if we all pull together, I think we're really just about on the verge of creating that multi-world species that really drives our heart and our passion. And to do so in a way that's inclusive of the entire planet, that's responsible towards our stewardship of this planet Earth, as we reach out to other worlds and help humanity become a species, not just of this one planet, but of many planets. Interplanetary species? What in the world is he talking about? He sounds ridiculous. He sounds like a little kid playing make-believe or just telling crazy stories. This is a multi-million dollar company. They received a $10 million contract from NASA in 2010. And then again in 2012, they received another contract for $10 million. Um, it's called a data contract. They have to provide NASA with data about the company's progress through a design checkpoint technical package and spacecraft development, payload accommodations, and get this, their planetary protection plan. I mean, this is ridiculous. I don't know how you can even make this up. Gotta give them credit for being able to make up such spectacular uh, situations. Anyways. 
Bob chairs the Space Commerce Committee of the Commercial Space Flight Federation and is a member of the International Institute of Space Law. <laughs> oh my goodness. As director of the Optech Space Division, blah, 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 blah. Um, aboard the NASA Phoenix lander, making the first discovery of falling Martian snow. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> and here's where it gets good. Bob studied aerospace and industrial engineering at Ryerson University, physics and astronomy at the University of Toronto, and space science at Cornell University, where he became special assistant to Carl Sagan. Now I get it. He's Carl Sagan's special friend. Now I understand how he got into all of these positions. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Bob is an evangelist of the New Space Movement and has been a catalyst for a number of commercial space ventures. What is that about? The New Space Movement? Can't people just be normal anymore? Why is everyone so messed up? And yet we truth seekers are considered crazy. Singularity University and this new space movement, they are scary. Anyways, it goes on. He is the recipient of this and that award, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, Robert Babyface Richards claims to have a doctorate of space achievement from the International Space University for distinguished accomplishments in support of humanities, exploration, and use of space. This is the university that he founded in 1987. He's the founder of a university 10 years after he started college. He started college in 77. How ridiculous is this malarkey? Ugh. Give me one second. I think I'm going to be sick. So, back to the fact sheet. Moon Express Payload Review Determination is really just a press release written for the media. I mean, propaganda outlets. Let's see, it reads... The FAA has determined that the launch of the payload does not jeopardize public health and safety, safety of property, U.S. national security or foreign policy interests, or international obligations of the United States. You can read the entire fact sheet or press release for yourself. There's nothing of interest in there. No details, just fluffy, gumbly gook. So they went this route of FAA payload review because, according to The Verge, no regulatory framework currently exists for a commercial space mission to another world. <laughs> Lawmakers are working on a permanent solution, but it likely won't be ready in time for Moon Express's 2017 mission. So the company came up with its own temporary framework, a regulatory patch. It's just like NASA. They're always making patches with their super smart engineers that the U.S. government could use to oversee the company's mission. And after meeting between the Federal Aviation Administration, the White House, and the State Department, Moon Express has been given the approval it needs to launch to the moon. The article on The Verge is laughable. It goes on. Moon Express's regulatory patch is only a temporary fix, though. Legislators are working on a long-term framework that will help the U.S. government oversee private deep space missions. And... The problem for Moon Express revolved around getting approval for its payload. Whenever a private company wants to conduct a space mission, it must apply for a license to launch its spacecraft from the FAA. Part of that application process, called the Payload Review, involves telling the FAA what's going into space and where it's going. <laughs> where it's go they got no clue. The FAA has no power over what companies do when they get to space. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. However, the FAA does consult with other agencies during the approval process. One of those agencies is the State Department. Isn't that where Hillary used to work? Yeah, yeah, that's a legit department. Which made it clear to Moon Express that it would step in and ask the FAA to deny the request, Richards said. That's because the department can't reliably enforce the Outer Space Treaty when the Moon Express lander is on the lunar surface. <laughs> that gave Moon Express the idea to share more information than the federal government required. The company submitted a souped-up payload review in which it voluntarily declared how the 2017 lunar mission would comply with the provisions of the Outer Space Treaty. Well, that was so nice of Moon Express to do that and their team of lawyers. That was really nice. 
There are no new laws, no new regulations, said Richards. We proposed a scenario where we would build on the existing payload review process. Moon Express tried to address three critical provisions of the Outer Space Treaty. First, nations must continually supervise all of the space missions that happen within their borders. Moon Express told the FAA it would frequently update the agency with information on the 2017 trip so that the government could oversee it. Good boy. Good boys. The second rule is not messing with other nations' spacecraft or space operations. Don't be naughty in space, folks. On the moon, that mostly means respecting the Apollo sites. <laughs> and Moon Express assured the government that it wouldn't disturb these areas. Don't do wheelies over Neil's footprint, joked Richards. Oh yeah, it's all a big joke. Finally, Moon Express had to show the State Department it would abide by the Outer Space Treaty's provision that is meant to prevent people from contaminating other worlds, called planetary protection. <laughs> You're killing me, NASA. If companies like Moon Express want to land on a body in outer space, they have to be careful not to spread too many bacteria on the surface. Not too many. I have a microscope right here. I could help them, you know, count the bacteria, perhaps. Fortunately, the moon doesn't host life, so Moon Express doesn't have to worry too much about contamination. In its voluntary disclosures to the federal government, Moon Express gave the FAA all its data about how it would adhere to the rules of planetary protection. After giving all of this information to the FAA, the State Department, and the White House, the various agencies met to decide whether these disclosures were good enough. And the decision went in Moon Express's favor. Yay! Oh, jeez. This really is Santa Claus pink unicorn land here. I mean, when you're a little, if your parents tell you that Santa Claus and Rudolph the Reindeer exist, you believe them until you are old enough to use logic and reason to stop believing in Santa Claus and Rudolph. It is no different with space and NASA. These swindlers put on white lab coats and get PhDs from universities like the International Space University or Singularity University. They make space movies or just tell the citizens stories like the moon landing and deep space probes. And people believe them. Why would they lie? Well, why would your parents lie and tell you stories? The elites consider the masses to be too stupid and inferior to see through the lies. I mean, they put the truth right out there, or they make the claims so ridiculous that they figure if you can't use your own logic and reason to see through the fiction, then you're not qualified to be in their club anyways. Anyway, so back to trying to find an office or any useful information for Moon Express. Well, basically it doesn't exist. The principal address for Moon Express Florida, Inc. is 100 Spaceport Way, Cape Canaveral, Florida, which is also the address for the U.S. Air Force Space and Missile Museum Foundation. I didn't find any pictures of the claimed Moon Express office at this location. I'm sure it's just a tiny office, maybe even a janitor's closet, used simply to have an address to list on their annual report, which is bare bones as well. There's nothing in that annual report that's of any use. Names, registered office, address, that's it. So the company that is tackling the historic task of returning to the moon has barely any physical presence. No offices, no phone numbers, just a pathetic PDF brochure, a generic web page, and tons of media propaganda. Look at their YouTube channel. They have all these YouTube productions but they have no phone numbers or offices. They were even mentioned on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon a few days ago. Uh, this is kind of crazy. I saw that a private company called Moon Express says it wants to start offering trips to the moon for under $10,000 a ticket. Most people are like, yeah, I'm not sure I want to book the cheapest option for my trip to outer space. This is a Disney production, folks. SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Moon Express, they are the future of space travel, all right? I mean, they look like Disney movies. No substance with Moon Express. It's all for show. 
And speaking of the show, here's the produced CNN Money interview with Moon Express co-founder Naveen Jain. Enjoy, guys, and thank you so much for watching. Take care. Is Moon Express going to be the first private mission to land on the moon? Absolutely. There is no doubt in my mind that we will be the first company ever to land on the moon. You guys just made history in getting FAA approval for this launch. We became the first company ever to actually get a permission to leave Earth orbit. There are laws and regulations under the Outer Space Treaty that the United States had to follow. And the fact that they, in a short period of time, gave us a permission to be able to go land on the moon, that is, a, as uh, quoting Joe Biden, is a BFD. <laughs> a BFD, yeah, it is a BFD. <laughs> You're a massive step closer to putting this lander on the moon by December 31st of 2017. We already have the rocket and to really build all the software ready to go and land on the moon by 2017. In some sense now, we're simply running against the clock. This particular mission here, yeah. you're going to land a roughly 20 pound lander on the moon. You have to move it or 500 meters in any direction. You have to transmit HD video and HD images back to the Earth. How hard is the architecture to actually pull that off? To well, put together? So this is a micro lander that's going on a small rocket uh, made by Rocket Lab. And the beauty of the whole thing is the cost of this mission is under $10 million because the rocket is 3D printed, our lander is 3D printed. Is there any price to pay for the fact that that price is so low? Does it compromise the safety of the mission? The same technology that making the iPhones thinner and thinner is what's making the our lander smaller and smaller. So but what are you guys trying to accomplish with these missions right now? I mean, is this just a proof of concept getting this lander to the moon? What are you guys actually looking to do once you get there? To record John F. Kennedy, we chose to go to the moon not, not because it's easy, because it's a good business. I don't think he said business. I think he said it because it's hard. I said re Right, okay, re -quoting. Okay, got it. Just a slight amendment there. Yeah. Uh, so um, why do you think going to the moon is a good business? It's been estimated the moon has 16 quadrillion dollar worth of uh, uh, minerals on the moon, right? And any which way you look at it, uh, as someone would say, it's a <laughs> shit of money. <laughs> That is true. But we're still, though, many steps away from being able to actually mine the moon and bring those but, minerals uh, back here to Earth. As a great entrepreneur, you always want to be where the puck is going to be, not where the puck is. So what we're doing is really looking ahead to see what are the great things we could do to make life for people on better on Earth, at the same time to allow the, our humanity to become a multi-planetary society so we don't have the single point of failure like dinosaurs did. Well, do you guys foresee a future where Moon Express is transporting humans course, to the moon? Of really? Course, of course. How far away do you think that is? 10 to 15 years away. 10 to 15 years. So you guys think that you'll be the first company to bring humans to the moon, private company? Are we going to be the first company to allow the honeymoon to be possible? <laughs> I, th I would love to take my honeymoon on the moon. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. May God have mercy on your soul. They were due to hello, hello, anybody home? Oh. Huh? Think, but why? Right. Think. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.